Hola estimados suscriptores, soy Javier Vergara de Enfermería y Seguridad del Paciente. En este video presentaremos el análisis del caso de la paciente Winner Rose, el cual describe un caso sucedido en un hospital de Estados Unidos. Este caso nos describe lo importante que es la prevención de las infecciones asociadas a la atención en salud. No olvides suscribirte a nuestro canal, darle me gusta, hacer un comentario y presionar la campanita para que recibas nuestras notificaciones. Actualmente en los países de ingresos altos, 7 de cada 100 pacientes ingresados en un hospital de cuidados intensivos contraen al menos una infección nosocomial durante su hospitalización. Cifra que asciende a 15 de cada 100 pacientes en los países de ingreso bajo o mediano. Por término medio, uno de cada 10 pacientes afectados fallecerá por una infección nosocomial. El impacto que tienen las infecciones relacionadas con la atención en salud y la resistencia a los antimicrobianos en la vida de las personas es incalculable. Más del 24% de los pacientes afectados de septicemia de origen nosocomial y el 52.3% de esos pacientes tratados en una unidad de cuidado intensivo mueren cada año. Estas muertes se duplican o triplican cuando las infecciones son resistentes a los antimicrobianos. Veamos el caso. In a hospital boardroom somewhere in America. The case of Whitney Ross. What went wrong? In a way, I think we all wish that the result of her case had been related to her appendicitis. But it wasn't. So what went wrong? And what can we do to fix it? Whitney was a sophomore in college, an excellent student with dreams and goals. She came to be in post-op after having an appendectomy. Still doing a little bit of everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but this IV line still really hurts. Well, like I said, I can try moving it to the other arm whatever you could do. Sure. Is that a rash? Oh, my cat scratched me a few days ago. I told them when they took my history. Okay. It shouldn't be a problem if the IV is down by the wrist. Thanks. Sorry to be such a bother. I'll be back in just a minute. Okay. The probable source of the infection was down the hall. Tom wasn't even supposed to still be there, but he contracted a MRSA infection at his surgical site. His daughter, Kelly, unfortunately didn't understand that even though she was just a visitor, she was also a part of the healthcare team. Hey, uh, my dad could use an extra pillow for his back. Okay, I'll bring you one in just a second. Kelly had been educated by a nurse about the barrier precautions and the dangers of healthcare associated infections, but she didn't quite grasp how just one lap. El primer error que podemos observar es la falta de capacitación sobre prevención de infecciones al paciente y a la familia. Casos como este que vemos en la imagen son muy comunes, se ven a diario por parte de los pacientes y familiares. Debemos ser insistentes con la familia sobre el respeto a las normas. Por ejemplo, en pacientes geriátricos con problemas neurocognitivos, se ve con frecuencia la contaminación de espacios comunes por parte de ellos, debido a sus problemas neurocognitivos, se les dificulta comprender las normas. Dina, she was a good nurse, but was burned out with stresses at work and home. I know you're always busy with all the paperwork you're doing, but if you could get to us soon. She wasn't going the extra mile to ensure the safety of patients. I just need another minute or two, and then I will bring you a pillow. Yes. Okay. Thanks. She recognized Kelly wasn't using a glove. El segundo error que observamos es la actitud pasiva de la enfermera que observa que el familiar del paciente contamina la superficie del puesto de enfermería y no actúa para realizar la desinfección del mismo, lo que permite que todos los que se acercan al puesto de enfermería se contaminan también produciendo una cadena de contaminación que puede traer consecuencias graves para otros pacientes. She recognized Kelly wasn't using her gloves correctly, but didn't use the opportunity to educate and didn't take personal responsibility for cleaning a potentially contaminated surface. Uh, Whitney's IV still hurts. I'm going to try moving it to the other arm. Can you cover Mr. Daniels for a few minutes? 
Yeah, I wasn't going to finish this anyway. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Nathan, he was the director of the post-op unit. He'd come back from a conference on patient safety and infection control, motivated to make a difference. But he never instituted a sustained effort. Real change never happened. So an otherwise responsible new nurse just out of school never got the message. She was using gloves, so she didn't... El tercer error que observamos es el incumplimiento de los protocolos de prevención de infecciones que especifica como lo pide la OMS a los profesionales sanitarios que se tomen cinco momentos a fin de prevenir la septicemia en la atención sanitaria. Estos cinco momentos son antes de tocar al paciente, antes de realizar una tarea limpia o aséptica, después del riesgo de exposición a líquidos corporales, después de tocar al paciente, después del contacto con el entorno del paciente. Inclusive, el lavado de manos debe realizarse antes de ponerse los guantes y después de retirárselos. So, an otherwise responsible new nurse just out of school never got the message. She was using gloves so she didn't also feel the need to wash her hands. Nathan Staff did everything right when he was around. But there was no sense of ownership, no real change. There wasn't 100% commitment. Oh, that's so much better. Thank you. Let me know if there's anything else you need. Okay. Um, straight A's this semester and a million dollars. Okay, set your sights a little lower. Just buzz. <laughs> the infection preventionist working with post-op was Janice. Janice couldn't successfully implement a team approach to infection prevention. Hey, can I talk to you for a minute? Why? What's wrong? She was always considered an outsider. Nothing's wrong. I just wanted to follow up with you on some ideas. She lacked the skills to successfully coach staff members, and so everyone's awareness of healthcare-associated infections suffered as a result. Is it cold in here? I don't think so, but I can get you another blanket. Okay. The nurse made a note in a chart but didn't alert anyone until after shift change. Temperature is 101, blood pressure 145 over 97, nothing moving in her GI tract, hypoactive bowel sounds. Looks like it's ileus. Mm. Guess you stand another day. Yeah. Let's see what Dr. Kennedy says. Thanks. And well, in his third year of med school, he longed to make a difference. A temp of 101 is fairly typical for appendicitis. Let's monitor the post-operative ileus for 24 hours. But the patient got worse. She's been acting a little confused, but her temperature went back down. What concerns me is her arm. Look. Man. El cuarto error que observamos es la falla en la comunicación y el trabajo en equipo. La doctora quiere demostrar su jerarquía por encima de las opiniones del equipo de trabajo, donde cada opinión es valiosa para el éxito del tratamiento del, de un paciente. La comunicación efectiva donde se recopila información de todos los colegas de trabajo sin importar el rango well, es muy importante. I saw that. But it's here in her history. Her cat scratched her arm and she got a rash. Did you read her history, Manuel? Let's stick Dr. with Dr. Kennedy directed the team to continue the antibiotics already prescribed for her appendectomy and closely monitor her condition. Monitor for peritonitis. I'm on call this weekend. Alert me if she doesn't respond. But Manuel's rotation and post-op was almost over and he didn't want to stick his neck out. Manuel accepted the attending's course of action without objection. When it came time to make a difference, he didn't speak up, even though the problem was staring him in the face. 48 hours later, the nursing assistant took Whitney's vitals at shift change, including a temperature of 97 and blood pressure of 90 over 60. But Manuel just recorded it and never related to the nurse or bothered Dr. Kennedy because it was the weekend. It was a chain of events that should not have happened. By the time she reached the ICU, she was suffering from organ failure as a result of sepsis. And then... Hey, Dr. Green. Um, everyone, the ICU just called me. Whitney from 204, she had a MRSA infection in her bloodstream. She passed away. I'll be around to talk with everyone, but... Any one of several individuals could have made a better decision, and Whitney might be alive today. She came in with appendicitis. But everyone knew that a patient had just died from poor infection prevention and poor communication. What's wrong? What could they say? They said what had too often been said. 
Nothing. Um, how can I help you? No, my dad is asking about. What happened? Whitney joined countless others who have died of an infection acquired during their care. But you know what? It doesn't have to be like this. This is not reality. You have a second chance to go back in time and make new decisions as five of these characters. See if you can make choices that will change their approach to healthcare associated infections and prevent this outcome. Get it? This is you. This is you. This is you. This is you. And this is you. Go back in time and make better decisions so that this is you. Doctor said I healed up fast. And not this. Take a walk in their shoes. If you're smart, we can improve quality of care and save patient lives. En conclusión, hay otros procesos que no se pueden ver a simple vista en la atención del paciente. Solemos buscar culpables entre esas cosas que no logramos ver. Están la sobrecarga del trabajo, la falta de enfermeras y las malas condiciones laborales, falta de capacitación, etc lo cual puede tener un impacto negativo en la seguridad del paciente. Muchas gracias, no olvides suscribirte a nuestro canal, darle me gusta, hacer un comentario y presionar la campanita para que recibas nuestras notificaciones. Nos vemos la próxima semana en un nuevo video. Bye.